All right, we've got huge breaking NFL news this morning, and I think that this is going to have effects on the entire league, especially on the teams at the top of the league. The Buffalo Bills have traded their star wide receiver, Stephon Diggs, to the Houston Texans, and they've traded him to Houston for a very affordable rate, which is part of a trend that we've seen with star players who have been dealt this year. The price, a second-round pick, 2025 second-round pick heading to Buffalo. The Texans also receive a 2025 fifth-round pick and a sixth-round pick. The price wasn't even a two because you're getting a couple picks back. It wasn't even a 2024 two. This is a 2025 pick and then a 2025 fifth rounder and a sixth rounder coming back to Houston. That's all for four years of Stefan Diggs. So 49ers side of this, there's likely going to be no King's ransom offered for Brandon Ayuk unless, unless the Bills, who might now be interested in an alpha receiver, call the 49ers about Brandon Ayuk. I semi-joke on that front but just based on the price tags of the players that have been traded some of the stars we saw legerius Sneed, obviously who's on the franchise tag so that was a little bit more complicated but he didn't fetch much at all when he was traded and now you see stefan diggs who actually has an extremely favorable contract situation for the texans he's traded for only a second round pick and and they get some picks back on top of that take Take a look at this. We're going to look at the contract situation that Houston is inheriting because this, to me, is fascinating. So you still have four seasons under contract, 24, 25, 26, and 27. The Buffalo Bills have already paid the signing bonus and the option bonus for Stephon Diggs. They've already paid $37 million in signing bonus and $16 million in option bonus. That's all on the Bills books. They're going to take this on as dead money. In fact, this is $3 million more expensive for Buffalo to trade Stephon Diggs than to keep him on their salary cap this season, although they'll make up some of the money in future years because obviously no longer have to take on his base salaries. The base salaries are the responsibility of the acquiring team, the Houston Texans. Well, if you look at base salary plus per game roster bonus plus workout bonus total, it's only going to be about 18 to 19 million a year of salary cap space for the Texans in every single season. It's going to vary a little bit depending on the season because you can see the base salaries vary, but every single season will only be about 18 to 19 million dollars a year for Houston. So they've picked up, I, I get it, Stefan Diggs, that, that there are some concerns about Stefan Diggs and his attitude and all that on the field, but he is a very good receiver and Houston is going to have Stephon Diggs for about 18 to 19 million a year, and it only cost them about a second round draft pick. So my initial reaction, big picture competitively is, can Houston knock off the Chiefs in the AFC? Because we have quite the list of acquisitions for D'Amico Ryans and the Texans this offseason. On top of Diggs, they picked up Daniil Hunter. They picked up Joe Mixon, they picked up Danico Autry, Jeff Okuda, the cornerback, C.J. Henderson, the cornerback, Tim Settle, the defensive tackle. They've even picked up a new punter in Tommy Townsend. So a lot of free agents have headed Houston's way. The draft is still coming, so we'll see how that all works out for the Houston Texans. But they've obviously done their best to support their quarterback, C.J. Stroud. Nico Collins was one of the better receivers in the NFL last season. And now they've added Stephon Diggs on top of that. You know, I talk about unless the Bills call the 49ers about Ayuk, it's fitting that this morning, this is the piece that came out on the Athletic from me. So you should definitely check it out. What Brandon Ayuk's new contract with the 49ers might look like. The 49ers and Ayuk are obviously both shooting toward the same goal. But I've always mentioned that if a King's ransom comes, the 49ers would at least have to think about it because that's just how business works in the NFL. Every man has his price. I would say that there will likely be no King's Ransom for Brandon Ayuk. I think that the days of somebody like DeForest Buckner fetching a first-round pick are so far in the rearview mirror, it's not even funny. Consider that Buckner fetched a first-round pick in 2020 
despite the fact that the Colts still had to award him a new contract and pay the signing bonus and take on the $21 million per year. Stephon Diggs, who I think is an impactful player as well, wide receiver, one would argue, one might argue in this modern day and age that receivers of Diggs' caliber and defensive tackles might be on a similar plane. But Stephon Diggs, it, most of his contract has already been taken care of, or a huge chunk of his contract has already been taken care of by the Buffalo Bills through the signing and the option bonus. So Buffalo is inheriting, uh, Houston is inheriting only the base salaries and, and the other bonuses for a price of 18 to 19 million per year. And they're only paying a second round pick minus whatever the 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 fifth and, and the sixth rounder. And, and they said it came via the Vikings too, I see here through Diana Rossini. So anyway, the price is so much lower for the, the the price is just so much lower for a player of an impactful caliber than it was just a few years ago than it was just last year it's it's wild to me how the market has changed in some of these trades so a king's ransom something like a first rounder plus more for Brandon Ayuk seems completely unreasonable unless of course the bills really want to upgrade at wide receiver now that they've lost to Fon Diggs unless they feel that they just didn't have a match with Josh Allen there, and Brandon Ayuk would give him one, then maybe the 49ers can be blown away. But this is the most likely scenario. So anyway, speaking of fascinating financials, that's what this con that's what this article about Brandon Ayuk is all about. You know, you talk about Nico Collins and Stefan Diggs on the same team. These are the NFL leaders in yards per route run, receiving efficiency last season. Tyreek Hill at the top, Nico Collins at two, Ayuk three, Justin Jefferson only played those 10 games last year because of injuries, and then C.D. Lamb. So these were the five most efficient receivers in football. Diggs obviously wasn't on that list. He was, he was higher in previous seasons. He was with Buffalo for four years, but his stats dropped off a little bit, had about 1,100 total receiving yards for Buffalo this past season, but he's going to be teamed up with Nico Collins, who actually, in terms of yards per route run, was even more efficient than Brandon Ayuk last season. So it's going to be very, very interesting to watch. My big question here is, can Houston now knock off the Chiefs in the AFC? Do you have a Chiefs killer on that side of the bracket? From the Shanahan tree, right? D'Amico Ryan's now coaching the Houston Texans. It's doubly fascinating because when they talk about team building and being on the same page at the top of the power structure. D'Amico Ryan's credited the 49ers. He said that the model that the Houston Texans try to use was the 49ers model. I got video of this at the owners' meetings. D'Amico Ryan's talking about all of this. I'm going to see if I could find that, see if we could see D'Amico Ryan's talking about building his team in the same fashion as the San Francisco 49ers because, yeah, we're definitely going to have some of this. We'll have a quick little listen in to D'Amico Ryans because at the end of the day, San Francisco's influence with the way that Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch have operated has inevitably spread to many corners of the league with their former assistants being in so many different spots. And we can have a listen. Well, this is going to be a longer video. I hope I could find the edited version of this so we can find – D'Amico talking about, well, we'll play this and maybe we'll find the very end of it. Let's go. Expect them to say how he operates and how they, how him and John work together. I think that's one thing that I've always leaned on. Me, me working with Nick and just how I see things being, how to have a successful organization. It's the head coach and GM working in step. I saw that from, from Kyle and so I was seeing how, how they work together. I think that's credited why the 49ers have been you know, so successful over the past few years just because of their working relationship. So you see that organizational structure from the 49ers, you do see it carried over to, to a lot of how you try to operate now. Yeah, for sure. I think you know, it's all about collaboration. When everybody's working together, you can get things, get things accomplished. So I think they really, really set the set the path for that collaboration piece. And you know, those guys have had an outstanding, outstanding season. You know, past couple of years, being able to go to uh, 
conference championship game, Super Bowl, you see the success that they've had because they work together well, they add the right players, right guys with the right character. And you know, of course, Kyle Hunt is an outstanding coach, one of the best offensive coaches you know, in the NFL. So when you add all those things together, you just get a successful, successful team. D'Amico Ryan's talking about how he is building the Texans, so he's collaborating at the top there with the GM and how he's using the 49ers' cooperation between Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch as a model. And the 49ers under Shanahan and Lynch have been one of the most aggressive teams, if not the most aggressive team as far as acquiring talent in the NFL. So Houston picking up so many free agents this offseason, now trading for Stephon Diggs, that same type of aggressiveness. and. You could see with the price tag, with the fact that Diggs is only going to cost 18 to 19 million per season on the cap, that's a bargain when you've got, I mean, his original contract was worth 24 million per year. So if you could get Buffalo paying a large chunk of his contract and only pay a second round pick, I think that is, that's prudent aggressiveness from the Houston Texans. That's something that is not likely to have too big of a downside for them. Because, you know, also you look at Diggs' contract. Let me find this. Let's see how much more. I don't even know if there's any more guaranteed because we're already on year three of this deal. So this could end up being something where there's a whole lot of team control for the Houston Texans. His salary for this season is guaranteed. It became guaranteed on March 18th. So he's guaranteed throughout all of this year. But there's going to be a whole lot of team control for the next three years. 2025, 2026, and 2027, the final three years of the deal, none of that is guaranteed. Again, the signing bonus and the option bonus have already been taken care of by Buffalo. $3.5 million of his $18 million base salary for 2025 becomes guaranteed on March 19th of next season. So basically, if things go completely haywire here for Houston, this could just be a one-year rental of Stephon Diggs. And I don't think that they're going to go haywire. I think that D'Amico Ryans is a good, solid organizational structure, and they expect Stephon Diggs to play for them at this discounted rate for a few years. He's 31 years old, obviously is not in his complete physical prime anymore. I think we saw that a couple of years ago with Diggs, but at 18 to 19 million, it's not, not bad for Stephon Diggs. Not bad at all for the Houston Texans. All right, we're going to move this to a 49ers Q&A. How does this apply to the league? How does it apply to the 49ers? It's all tied together because we are discussing some of the elite teams in the NFL when we talk about the Chiefs, the Bills, the Texans now. I think they've earned their way at least to that table and obviously the 49ers. We got people happy for D'Amico Ryan's thinking the Texans look really good. They've added a lot of players indeed. Do the Bills even have the assets to even consider trading for Brandon Ayuk? Well, as you can see, the trade market isn't commanding massive returns. So I think every team theoretically would have assets to trade for anybody because you could use future picks as well. Now, that being said... I think that the 49ers are very, very locked in on wanting to extend Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk wants a deal to be done with the 49ers as well. I mean, that was the centerpiece of uh, the comments from both sides over the course of the past week plus. And I think that the 49ers are in a position where they want to make sure they can kick the door down this next year. You can cross the bridge of a lot of the salary cap issues in 2025, the way that the 49ers have set it up is that 2025 is the inflection point. Now, so if you want to be better this year, it's really hard to make a case that you can do that without Brandon Ayuk on this football team, given how good he was this past season. So it would, you're right, it would take a massive return to convince the 49ers that they could somehow get better without Brandon Ayuk on this football team. So I do think that you have a solid point in that regard. That being said, the trade market for a lot of these veterans has not been good. Any of these veterans hasn't been good. The days, again, the days of DeForest Buckner, a defensive tackle, fetching a top half first round pick in 2020 for the 49ers, which was really good value for the 49ers back then. I mean, to get a first round pick, especially when you look at it compared to what's going on now, those days are over. So it, it, that, that leads you, you know, in circular logic, that leads you back to the 49ers 
staying put with Brandon Ayuk this year because it just looks really unlikely that they would be blown away by an offer. JM617 says that this is a win for the 49ers. I would have to agree. I mean, you've got Houston loading up on the other side of the AFC. They're going to be the direct challenge. I mean, Buffalo is good too. So I think if you're the 49ers, you like to see rising challengers to the Chiefs on the other side of the bracket. If you're talking in terms of usurping the Chiefs, you at least want their road to the Super Bowl to be as difficult as possible. And I think the 49ers have the most respect for teams that are run in a similar fashion to them, which obviously Houston is with D'Amico Ryans and that 49ers staff at the top. I don't know if Brandon Ayuk is thinking about his trade market. I think the thing about Brandon Ayuk is that he's got to be worried about his contractual market, the dollars, the guaranteed money, the APY. That's what Brandon Ayuk should be worried about. You know, his trade market, well, that that that's completely out of his control and might not even be reflective of the type of player that he is just because the seems the draft picks and the, the, the value of, of those going back and forth and players going back and forth in trades, that's been completely skewed. The picks seem much more valuable than they were a few years ago just based on the price that we saw for DeForest Buckner. The Colts were willing to send over a top half first-round pick, and in this case, Stephon Diggs is moving for only a second rounder, not even this season in 2025. You use the Legereus Sneed trade as another example. But the dollars and cents, and the 49ers have stated they want to pay Brandon Ayuk, and Brandon Ayuk has stated that he hopes that a deal gets done with the 49ers. The dollars and cents just on the 49ers side, that's where value and market and, you know, that's where this is going to be decided in all likelihood. And that's where it's most relevant. So that's what I wrote about. I even have a contract projection in this piece. It's linked in the description on The Athletic. This is my projection for Brandon Ayuk's contract. So you can go ahead and check it out. I'm not going to get too far into the weeds on this video. Probably be another video where I'll have a chance to do so. You can look, though, to see how I would structure Brandon Ayuk's contract so that it would fit under the salary cap, lower his salary cap hit for 2024 from 14 million to 8 million. So the 49ers can actually fit him for the next three years at a cheap rate and also fit Brock Purdy. It is possible. A lot of people are acting like it's not. That doesn't completely eliminate the possibility of a trade. I get it. But when I say that this is on a really good track to getting done, you just had to listen to what Brandon Ayuk said a few days ago. You just had to listen to what John Lynch said a few days ago. And the 49ers have a track record of letting cooler heads prevail. And when they've had an A-list goal of signing one of these guys for the long term, they have succeeded in four straight seasons. So we'll see if they can make it five out of five. It was George Kittle in 2020, Fred Warner in 2021, Debo Samuel in 2022, and Nick Bosa in 2023. And yes, they can fit both Samuel and Brandon Ayuk on the team. Hell, they could fit Ayuk and all four of those A-listers that I talked about on the team with the salary cap based on the contract proposal that I put out there, which you can go ahead and check out. As you can see, I use the double bonus structure. Blue is the signing bonus. Green is the option bonus. I prorated both of them, kept the cap hit low, dropped it from 14.1 million in 2024 to 8.1 million. There is so much misinformation out there regarding potential Brandon Ayuk contract dynamics that it just makes my head hurt. The worst is, oh, they can't re-sign Ayuk because his cap hit would uh, cause the cap hits of the receiver room to, to balloon to a level they can't handle. Guys, it would make the receiver room cap hit smaller. Extensions with guaranteed money are actually beneficial for a team's salary cap if that player remains available and productive. And Brandon Ayuk has only missed one game over the past three seasons. Extensions allow you to be flexible with the cap because you could do stuff like this. You could stretch cap hits out into the future like an accordion with the blue and the green here, the signing bonus and the option bonus. 
They actually use three separate bonuses with Nick Bosa to get his deal done. So extensions allow you to be flexible in a time when you need flexibility if you're the 49ers with Brandon Ayuk. Now, maybe the Bills give you more flexibility than you ever dreamed of. Maybe the King's Ransom does come if Buffalo calls, but there likely will be no King's Ransom based on the, the paltry price. I'll call that a paltry price that we saw Houston have to pay Buffalo for Stephon Diggs. A very affordable rate. Diggs is only going to cost 18 to $19 million a year on the cap for Houston, and they're building a really strong team. Again, we can go through some of the pickups for Houston so far this offseason in free agency. It's been an impressive list. Stephon Diggs, Daniil Hunter, the edge rusher, Joe Mixon, the running back, Danico Autry, defensive tackle, Jeff Okuda, cornerback, C.J. Henderson, another corner, Tim Settle, a defensive tackle, Foley, Farukasi, the defensive tackle, and Tommy Townsend, the punter, the free agents who have come to Houston so far this offseason. And yes, the 49ers also have the benefit of Brock Purdy only making a million dollars on the cap this offseason. Jennings has not signed his tender. This is not true. Jennings posted his tender, which is the offer. He didn't sign it. He didn't post the, the, the signing of the tender. Teams can still offer Jawan Jennings a contract, and he could still sign the offer sheet with them. We're waiting for Brock Wright. We'll see if Detroit decides to match the tight ends offer sheet from the 49ers. Brock Wright has literally signed an offer sheet with the 49ers. And now Detroit has a chance to match it. They've got five days. I think that five-day window is going to be coming up here any day. That was on Friday, right? I'm not sure if weekends count or not. It was a holiday too. So hopefully the NFL doesn't count uh, Sunday as as one of the days in the, in the progression there. It might be five business days, but we'll see. At some point this week, Brock Wright, might become a 49er or he might stay with the Lions if they match the offer sheet. But Juwan Jennings is still a restricted free agent until he puts pen to paper on that tender. He's likely to stay with the 49ers, but that was misinformation. A lot of people took the actual tender and thought that was Juwan Jennings signing it, but that was not the case. Being Butterfly hopes that the 49ers can get Brock right. So does Uncle Sam, who thinks that the 49ers have never had a tight end two with his talent. Aaron loves the offseason. I mean, the offseason's interesting, especially when you wake up and you see that the Texans have traded for Stephon Diggs. It could be five days today for Brock Wright, but I'm not sure if they count the weekends or not. That's that's my only... I, I don't know. I've actually never covered a restricted free agent signing so we'll when it becomes official the 49ers will announce it i just don't know what the exact timing will be all right we have 559 viewers which is my home area code and i think that's a good spot to finish everybody be sure to check out the brandon Ayuk article it is linked in the description i propose the contract for brandon Ayuk in there i think it's very related to stefan diggs moving from the bills to the Texans. Good stuff this morning. We'll talk to everybody very soon.